I always love to start off everything with uh, a picture because I think it's worth a thousand words. If you look at the lifetime, this is CDC data of obesity, you can see in 1986, only seven states had the highest amount of obesity, about 10 to 14 percent. And if you look at these five-year, 10-year trends, you can see the really big increase in obesity. And I'm going to skip through really quickly, but this is 2021 data. Do you know how many states have more than 40 percent obesity? Almost half. And every state has more than 30 percent obese. That's ridiculous, right? So if you look at the trend, the prevalence of obesity is 42 percent. This is just comparison to 10 years ago, which was 30 percent, a 12-year increase in a 10-year span. And unfortunately, if you look at severe obesity, you can see that it's almost double, 4.7 to 9.2 percent. And we see this in, un, in our kids as well. So that's really, really significant. And one big other thing, obesity compared to smoking, which is the number one killer, is the second leading preventable cause of death. I, and we're going to drive that home a little bit, OK? So obesity has a lot of factors. It is influenced, of course, by genetics, 162 genes associated with it. And of course, our behavior and environment, right? Which person, if you had AA, right, you were drunk and you, you were stopping drinking, nobody would come up to you and say, oh, have another drink. You can save for the next day. But they would do it if you're on a diet, right? They'll come and say, hey, you know, I made this cake just for you. Save the day diet for next time. Um, so it, there's many factors that culminate into obesity. So why do we care? It's because obesity, unfortunately, hits every single system that we have. And that's from head to toe, meaning headaches, migraines, to sleep apnea, to, of course, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, different types of cancers, including breast and colon, and unfortunately, premature death. So what is BMI? Normal BMI, by the way, BMI is how tall you are compared to how much you weigh, right? So a normal BMI is between 18 and 24.9. Every five BMI higher is overweight, then obese, and then morbid obesity. So once you hit 30, you're considered obese. If you look at what bariatric surgery was in 1991, the consensus was that if you had an obesity, a BMI of 40, meaning a lot of people had bad, bad comorbidities at that time, or 35 with some bad, bad medical issue, then you could have bariatric surgery. And it didn't account for adolescents or anybody else. Finally, 30 years later, <laughs> we have new guidelines. And the new guidelines are about 35 BMI lower. So at 35 BMI, you, can, you should be able to have surgery. And at 30, with some comorbidity, you can. And this has extended to children as well, so adolescents. And this is especially for patients with diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, of course, acid reflux and sleep apnea. And I'm Asian, I had to say this, but for the Asian population, it is even lower. And that's simply because Asians tend to have more comorbidities at lower BMIs. So what are the most common types of procedures that we do? There is gastric bypass, which is the most, what we consider gold standard, has been around since the 1960s. And it's where the stomach is cut into a small little pouch and the small intestine is rerouted and it bypasses a portion of the old stomach, which is why it's called a bypass. 
The great part about it is that you lose about 70 to 75% of your excess weight. And it's really, really good for patients who have acid reflux and diabetes. The sleeve gastrectomy is now the most commonly performed procedure at about 60 something percent. And it's where 80% of the stomach is removed um, and really relatively minimal complications. The biggest complication though is that this is not a procedure for somebody who has bad acid reflux because it can cause acid reflux 50% of the time. It does help patients lose 50 to 60% of their excess weight. The last one I'm gonna to touch on for histor historic purposes, this is the gastric band. It's been around but has not been used any longer since, 19, uh, for, since 2012. And that's simply because even though it was the most safest, it was not as efficacious, meaning it only helped most patients lose about 25% of their excess weight. And unfortunately, almost 80 to 90% of these procedures, these bands had to be removed to be replaced. And that's why it is not a primary procedure any longer. So why robotic surgery? Well, I'm sure you can hear from everybody over and over, it's better recovery, the patients feel better, there's less scarring and a quicker return to recovery. And this especially is true for a lot of the patients that we have to convert, meaning changing from band to elsewhere, or very, very high BMIs, meaning 50 BMI and higher. Um, and because the abdominal wall is very thick, and because of that, when you're struggling with laparoscopy or open, it's a really morbid procedure when done that way. And so robotics has really paved the way for that. And if you look at the resolution, meaning all the medical issues that is associated with it, you can see all the resolutions that have so significantly gone, and you can see the difference. So let's look at some graphs, I know, <laughs> quick. But if you look at people who had surgery versus people who didn't have surgery, so ones who didn't have surgery on red, you can see all their medical issues have really, really drastically decreased compared to the ones who have had surgery. And, right, mortality risk. If you look at people who had surgery, 0.6% die. People who didn't have surgery, 6.17% die. So the difference is 89% reduction in death. It's really significant. And I'm gonna push that down one more time. If you look at the difference between one, five, and 10 years, you can see a difference, not so much in the first year, but the fifth year, you get 5% difference. 10 year, you see almost a 10% difference in lifespan. So it's increasing your life. Take home message is, Bariatric surgery is a very useful and forceful tool. Cannot be used as a crutch, but it is with lifestyle modification and exercise is, is excellent. We are a center of uh, uh, quality and improvement, uh, a highest level that uh, our center can be given, um, and we do help adolescents and pediatrics. So another pictures, these are my patients who have done well and I think you know before and after pictures are worth a thousand words, and this is an adolescent as well. So thank you very much.